Hello, uh, my name is Tal Goldsworthy. I'm a chartered engineer with a background in air pollution control. I also have uh, Marfan syndrome, and in my mid-30s I discovered that apart from the skeletal and ocular effects, I also had a dilated aortic root. I was unimpressed with the offer of total root replacement, which was the surgery offered to me at that time, and I set out to produce a better solution to the problem. I started a team with Professor Tom Treasure and Professor John Pepper uh, to produce a personalised external aortic root support to stabilise the natural ascending aorta in people like me with Marfan syndrome. The personalised external aortic root support or PEARS project was started in 2000 and in May 2004 I was the first recipient of a PEARS implant around my Marfanoid aorta. The basic idea is fairly simple. We produce a, a model of the patient's aorta, and these are all entirely different and bespoke to each patient. We produce these models fairly simply by taking a standard CT study done in ventricular diastole, feeding that into a bespoke piece of computer-aided design code, which then produces the model. That's then sent to a standard 3D printer rapid prototyper to produce this hard model of the aorta. As you can see, this includes all of the morphological features of the aorta, from the AV junction right up to the brachiocephalic artery. You'll also see that the coronary ostia are marked on the implant, left and right main stems. Once we produce the model of the aorta, we then use that to produce the implant, which is to go inside the patient. You can see this is a very soft textile device. It's very, very porous. and It does, in fact, become fully incorporated in the adventitia. This is presented to the surgeon on the former, just as is here, the surgeon makes a couple of lateral cuts from the axial seam to each of the two coronary arteries, opens a small hole around each coronary ostium. He then opens the axial seam, takes the implant, secures the proximal end into the AV junction with a few sutures. Closing up the various seams, he then loops the top end around the brachiocephalic artery. Well, it's 13 years since my operation and I'm down here in the West Country today to speak to uh, Brent, who is the 100th patient to receive um, a personalised external aortic root support. So Brent, tell us a little bit about your, your lifestyle, your background and how you came to know that you had a, a dilated aorta. I'm uh, 55 years old. Uh, I currently live in uh, Maryland in the United States. Uh, my background is in uh, finance. I've led a pretty active lifestyle. Until I had my diagnosis, I was swimming about 10 kilometers a week and uh, surfing fairly regularly. As for discovering my uh, root aneurysm, uh, two years ago my mother died suddenly of a ruptured aortic root and uh, she was in her 80s so that wasn't really necessarily a red flag for me. It's just that when I looked into it, her sister died of exactly the same cause in her 50s and the father died in his mid-60s of a ruptured abdominal uh, aortic aneurysm. Because of that, I mentioned it to my uh, doctor in the States who referred me to a cardiologist who uh, sent me off for an ultrasound of my heart and uh, an ascending aorta. And that was when it was discovered they had a 51 millimeter aneurysm. Okay, once you realized that you had a dilated aorta, what did you do, do in terms of seeking medical advice for a, for a solution? Uh, my initial advice was uh, via my cardiologist who referred me to a surgeon. I also had a second opinion uh, from another surgeon and I was also referred to a geneticist who put me through uh, some genetic testing. The genetic testing proved uh, negative uh, in that they couldn't find any genetic markers which would have caused this, although it was pointed out that it was still a possibility because they didn't know, necessarily know all of the uh, genetic markers. After consulting the two surgeons, the general advice I was given was that I was a good candidate for a, a valve sparing uh, root replacement surgery and that I should wait until uh, my risk of uh, dying of rupture was became greater than the risk of having the surgery. They anticipated that to be when my root would probably be greater than uh, 55 uh, millimeters, 5.5 centimeters. And uh, they advised me that the longer I could keep going and, and, and manage the situation with uh, keeping low cardio output and lowering my blood pressure, there'd be less chance of having a reoperation. 
So ideally they wanted me to uh, maybe have the operation in five, uh, six years from when I saw them. The geneticist who uh, examined me, uh, she had a slightly more proactive view. She thought maybe I should look, look into having something done in the next year because I had a history of multiple dislocations and, and other things where she thought that I was uh, maybe had a connective tissue disorder that wasn't flagged up by the uh, genetic tests. So uh, how did you find out about the pairs option? Like most people, I got on the internet and uh, surfed furiously to see what my options were. And obviously I came up with the, uh, the standard procedures of the valve sparing and the uh, bental procedures and, and the Florida sleeve. And I also came across pairs. I did that before I'd actually saw the, cardiologist, uh, the, the cardiac surgeons. And I did bring it up with them. They were very down on the Florida sleeve. Uh, one of them had heard of pairs, but didn't really know in too much detail how it, how it actually worked. And they did steer me, try to steer me clear of it on the basis that uh, I think it wasn't really in the area of interest. The geneticist had actually seen a, just seen a video, I think, of you giving a presentation. And she basically said, one, it was a good option for me possibly, and I should look into it. And she also said that I should maybe look, given, given the anecdotal evidence from my medical history, that I was probably had some uh, tissue, a connective tissue disorder, and maybe I shouldn't wait five years. I should maybe look to have something done in the next year. But the, because she was more interested in the sort of a holistic view of me in a way of the fact that I had uh, multiple dislocations and various things like that. Okay. Um, you had your surgery a few weeks ago, um, and, and how are you feeling now? I'm feeling quite good. I mean, uh, it's four weeks today, and uh, I'm walking an hour a day without any stress. Uh, the only thing I'm, fi I'm finding is uh, sleep's a little difficult, because when you roll over in bed, it's, mm. it's quite difficult. Uh, my surgery, I think, was helpful because I, it only took two hours. I didn't need to go on bypass to have the pairs fitted. And I was out of the hospital, uh, I think it was on my fifth day. So I had a good start in a way. In hindsight now, how do you see the pros and cons of pairs compared to, to root replacement surgery? The initial draw for pairs was the fact that the surgery was less intense than my other options. Beyond that, really, I, I think it's really, because I'm a, a sort of, I, I enjoy financial modelling, I was more interested in the numbers. So if you look at the uh, for instance, operative fatality, uh, I'm number 100. I think we're at, a, you said, we're at 104 at the moment. And the operational fatality has been one person in that time. And I was told that I had to wait for my risk of death from rupture to breach 5 or 6% really before they'd be prepared to operate because that was my risk of short within a month uh, serious complications or fatality from a valve sparing route. And to live it for five or six years with that sort of risk wasn't that attractive. The other side that was the reoperation risk of, of a valve, um, valve sparing operation, because I was told that I might expect my, uh, my valve that had been relocated into the graft to only last maybe 10 to 20 years. And there was a five or six percent chance or more if I had a connective tissue disorder of needing a reoperation within 10 years. So I then went back to the, you know, the, what I could read on pairs, and there didn't seem to be any evidence of people not only dying from the operation, but needing reoperation because they had a problem with their aorta, and no one had had dissections. So that's really why I, why I liked it. I mean, and also there was a thing my brother used to say to me, which was uh, always keep it simple, stupid. You know, it's quite mind blowing when you're a member, a general member of the public and you go online and look at the look at the operations that are available. And it's technically very complex. You know, a pairs is is technically very complex, but the concept is simple. So that sort of appealed to me. So, you know, I look at your your uh, pairs there and it's almost identical to the one that I have in me and no one's been trying to change it for the last 13 years. So that was, that was, that was appealing to me. Ultimately though, uh, for, for a member of the public, there's a question of who pays and uh, I think the ultimate sort of arbiter in my case was my insurance company. 
because they're American based and this is a procedure that isn't actually available in America. So they looked at it pretty much, I think, from first principles based on the treatment criteria. And when they came back and said to me they'd pay for it, that was uh, quite reassuring. Mm. So what would your advice be to others who find themselves with aortic dilation and, and facing decisions about which surgical options to choose? The main advice I would give is uh, get very fit before you have your operation and also practice getting out of bed without using your arms because that's a, a very useful uh, thing to do. Uh, my advice on getting advice is you have to not necessarily take it for granted that the surgeon you speak to will know of all the options available to you because that was my experience and they may not wish to recommend something that they don't actually have practical experience of themselves. So I think you have to be uh, not fearful, confident, wide-eyed about looking into things and be in full control of the process until you finally sign your consent form to go into the uh, operating room. Well, thank you very much, Brent, for your, your observations. I do hope your recovery uh, continues well, as it clearly is, and that, thank like you. me, you can live a life entirely free of concern for any more, any more of your aorta. Um, I found to my cost that innovating in the medical world is, uh, is quite a challenge. Uh, for some reasons good and some bad, I suspect, there's a lot of conservatism in, uh, in medicine, particularly in cardiothoracic surgery. Um, it took us 11 years to do our first 50 pairs patients, but things are picking up and we've done the second 50 patients in less than two years. We're now up at 104 patients with 10 centres offering the surgery and another five coming online. If you'd like any more information about PEARS, you can find all of the information at the Extent website. That is www.extent.com forward slash medical hyphen publications. Finally, I'd like to thank Joel Dunning and the team at CTSnet for uh, inviting me to make this offer this uh, project update on the PEARS project. Thank you.